Adequate notice of this meeting was provided in the following ways. Notice published in the Courier News, notice posted on the bulletin board of the municipal building, notice made available to the township clerk and notice sent to the Courier News and the Star Ledger. Mr. Barlow, would you please read the open public meeting notice? Yes, Madam Chair, in keeping with the Department of Community Fair guidelines on uh, virtual meetings as a result of the COVID pandemic, um, this meeting is being held by way of the virtual uh, Zoom platform. The appropriate uh, login information was provided uh, in all the notices and it's appropriate to go forward in this fashion, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Waller? Yes. Councilwoman, thank you. Councilwoman Cahill. Here. Ms. Corcoran. Oh, you're muted. Here she is. She's muted. I'm so sorry. Here. <laughs> I do that all the time. Ms. Saunders. Oh. Reverend Kenny. Present. Mr. Atkins. Here. Mr. Foster. Here. And Madam Chair. Here. Could we all uh, please recite the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United of States the of America, America. And, to the and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. all. Thank you. Um, could you swear in the professionals, please, Mr. Barlow? Certainly. Um, I believe Ron and Mr. Clarkin um, and Ms. Apti. Okay. And if you'd all raise your right hand, you swear the testimony you give before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Self, you got? I do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion from the board to play the to pay the duly audited bills? I make a motion, uh, Madam Chair, Reverend Kenny, to pay the duly bills. Thank you. Do I'll I have a second? I'll second that, Madam Chair, Councilwoman Cahill. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mayor Waller? Yes. Councilwoman Cahill? Yes. Ms. Corcoran? Yes. Reverend Kenny? Yes. Mr. Atkins? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. And Madam Chair? Yes. Item number seven. Are there any changes to the agenda, Mr. Barlow? Madam Chair, not that I'm aware of. Okay. The agenda as of today is correct. As presented, okay, we can move forward. Uh, item number eight, adoption of resolution to memorialize action taking, taken on October the 12th, 2022. Um, can I, I get- Ms. Saunders would normally be handling it, but I guess in the absence of Ms. Saunders, if one of the members of the board um, could move the resolution to adopt um, 22 PB 19, which is a preliminary major subdivision, which the board approved. I make that, I so make that motion. Do I get a second? One quick round. I'll second that motion. Roll call, please. Mayor Waller. Madam Chair, I wasn't in attendance at the meeting, so I'm going to abstain. Okay. My apologies. Councilwoman Cahill? Yes. Ms. Corcoran? Yes. Reverend Kenny? Yes. Mr. Atkins? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. And Madam Chair? Yes. Next, Madam Chair, there's a resolution on De Costanza 21 PB 39. I'm sorry. 29 slash 30 V, which was a application to extend the time to perfect a minor subdivision, which the board approved. So if there could be a motion to adopt the resolution memorializing that. So I have a motion. I, have a chair. Uh, uh, I make a motion. This is the motion. I'm sorry, uh, Reverend Kennedy, I interrupted. Go ahead with your motion. <laughs> Make a motion uh, on uh, oh, what's PB the channel would PB sixteen seventeen V twenty one PB twenty nine and thirty V. Yeah, so do I have a second? 
second councilwoman cahill thank you roll call please councilwoman cahill yes miss corcoran yes reverend kenny yes mr atkins yes mr foster yes and madam chair yes item number 10 discussion area and need of study for redevelopment for block 6201 lot 6.02 on block and block 7401 lots 2.02 and 2.03 also known as 50 Knightsbridge Road 2 Skiles Avenue and 44 Holes Lane located on map pages 62 and 74 on the Piscataway Township tax map who's going to deal with that discussion Good evening, Madam Chair. My name is Malvika Apte. Um, I would be uh, presenting this area in need study, which uh, my office did prepare. Uh, we have a report that's dated October 27th, 2022. So I'll be providing a brief synopsis of that report and uh, you know, present the area in need study. Um, all right. Uh, I think you're telling me to proceed, so I'm going to... Uh, Mr. Barlow, is it okay if I share my uh, PowerPoint presentation? Of course, you're going to be sharing parts of your October 27th report. Exactly, just that. Okay. I've just put it in a, a PowerPoint format so nobody has to keep staring at my face. They can actually see uh, <laughs> oh, the plan. Go oh, right ahead. <laughs> All right. Um, just one second, please bear with me. Um, I want to make sure, because I have two screens, that you guys are looking at the presentation. If somebody can just confirm that for me, that yes, you are looking you at can. the... Okay, thank you. Um, sorry. There it is. All right. So as I mentioned, I'm here to present the area in need of redevelopment study uh, for block 6201, lot 6.02, block 7.01, lots 2.02, 2.03. I'm sure all of you are very familiar with these three properties. It's uh, in the central west, west portion of Township of Piscataway. Uh, in all, this study area is approximately 117 acres. Um, and it's uh, um, located or more familiar known as the Erickson Drive area. Uh, to begin this study, uh, the governing body, the Township Council, um, prepared a resolution and adopted a resolution around October 6th, uh, directing Planning Board to prepare this area in need of redevelopment study. They also directed that this would be a non-condemnation area in need of redevelopment uh, study, and uh, uh, in turn, Planning Board authorized uh, CME to prepare uh, this study. Uh, what you see before is an aerial map uh, showing the three properties. Uh, this is in our October 27th, 2022 report. Uh, very briefly, so the three properties, as you can see, uh, two of them front on Hose Lane, uh, one is uh, on Skiles Avenue. Um, very briefly, the, the properties um, are uh, currently uh, within uh, what we call the town center zone and the business professional zone of the township of Piscataway. Um, the lot 6.02, as you can see, which is the northernmost lot, is currently vacant. It has an uh, Ericsson Drive access easement going through the property along its uh, western uh, property line, as well as uh, it is mostly vacant and uh, developed um, um, with trees. At some point uh, between 1995 or 2002, there used to be an existing building on that property that was demolished. And ever since then, the property has remained essentially vacant. Uh, lot 2.03, which is uh, towards, which has the maximum frontage on Hose Lane, um, is a corner property. It has uh, about 2,000 uh, feet frontage on Hose Lane, and then part of it is on Skiles Avenue. This property is uh, currently developed with about four buildings, which are between one story to three story buildings, office buildings, and a uh, uh, an excessive amount of sea of parking around four parking lots. 
then uh, the third property, which we call block 7.7401 lot 2.02, uh, we refer to that as the real property because that essentially what it is. It only has a 290 foot frontage on Skiles Avenue and most of the property is to the rear of lot 2.03. Uh, this property is also uh, very familiar, I'm sure, because this is the property that contains the 11 story currently vacant office building, which I believe is one of the tallest building in Township of Piscataway. So it's almost like a landmark for uh, the township. Um, it is surrounded by a sea of parking. There used to be another building on this property, which has recently been demolished. And towards the um, southern uh, portion of the property, there is an existing one-story storage building. There is an electric substation. Most of the western portion of this property is um, currently vacant with a helipad um, on the western portion of the property. In terms of uh, environmental constraints on this entire study area, Lot 6.02, there is some presence of wetlands, again, through state mapping that we found out along its northern uh, portion of the property. And a 2.02 has an extensive amount of wetland along its western portion of the property. Um, there was uh, the 2.03 property currently has the NJEMS, which is essentially uh, environmental monitoring system going on. Other than that, there was no known contamination on this property that was found. Um, during this study, we also review the township's tax maps, we review township's uh, zoning map, we review township's all kind of violation notices, um, as well as uh, any other information, relevant redevelopment plans and studies for this property. Um, I'm gonna go through that individually for each property. Uh, we also looked at the uh, township of Piscataway's master plan. Uh, the most uh, recent comprehensive master plan was done in 2005, following which in 2020, we had the re-examination report done. What that tells us is what are the goals and objectives for uh, the township? The 2020 re-examination report just generally reaffirmed the goals of 2005, which basically says we want to promote efficient land use planning, we want to create ad adequate community facilities for its residents. Uh, we want to uh, promote a set strong sense of community and kind of create a uh, town center for our township. Um, we also, in our review, we look at the state development redevelopment plan, uh, which identifies this property in a PA1 zone, which is essentially uh, a um, um, infill uh, growth area where basically the state has said these are the areas that have been identified as already has existing infrastructure and they recommend re redevelopment of growth uh, or uh, replanning of this area. Um, these are some of the pictures. What we are achieving with this area and need study is we are trying to decipher if individually each of this property meets one of the eight criteria that are listed in our local redevelopment and housing law or um, section three, which I'll get into a little bit later, and can be designated as non-condemnation area in need of redevelopment. So uh, these are just few images which can be found in our report, in the appendices of the report. Uh, these are the eight categories. Again, I have um, kind of given it a more, uh, you know, easy read. Uh, the local redevelopment housing law goes into exactly what they mean for each criteria. The, the first criteria is deterioration or basically buildings that are deemed as unsafe and dilapidated. Um, the second criteria has to do with uh, abandoned uh, commercial buildings that have remained uh, uh, vacant for at least consecutively two years and are almost in a state of disrepair that they can't be uh, tenable anymore. 
The third criteria has to do with a land that is owned by municipality, by any public entity, or also an unimproved vacant lawn that has remained so for more than 10 years and uh, that has not developed um, just by private capital alone and needs some kind of uh, needs a public private partnership. Uh, criteria D has to do with uh, any buildings or site that in today's modern land use planning standards uh, can be deemed as obsolete layout and designed, and that would uh, kind of meet that criteria. Uh, criteria number E or five has to do with um, properties that are um, have some kind of um, condition of titles or diverse ownerships and because of which they haven't been developed over the years. Um, criteria F or over here six uh, has to do with fires and natural disasters, you know, properties or buildings that have uh, suffered any kind of um, um, fire or natural disasters can uh, be uh, designated through that uh, uh, criteria. Uh, criteria F has to do with areas uh, that are um, in the urban enterprise zone and can be uh, designated under this uh, criteria. And criteria 8 is smart growth consistency. Section 3 basically is um, uh, what we call a donut in a hole situation where you need to add this property by itself. The property can't meet any of the criteria, but the property is very essential in uh, a comprehensive redevelopment plan. So according to the LRHL, a property has to meet only one of these eight criteria or section three to be designated as area in need of redevelopment. Um, through this study, we have to study each property on its own, uh, unless a section three can be applied to them. Now, um, I'll uh, briefly describe each property and uh, what we found when we studied the property. Block 6201, lot 6.22. This is that vacant property located on the northern portion of your study area. Uh, it has frontage along Hose Lane as well as Knightsbridge um, uh, Road. This property is about 28 acres uh, in size, and it, has, it is an irregularly shaped lot. Um, a review of aerial images showed that at some point this property was developed with a structure. However, somewhere between 1995 to 2002, that appears to have been demolished. Uh, there are several easements noted on the property that has to do with access easement, which is essentially your Ericsson Drive. It has a couple of uh, drainage easements on the property. It also has the uh, varied width slope easement along the hose lane uh, frontage. Uh, the property itself is in the zone X, which is the area of minimal flood hazard. Uh, however, uh, as I'd mentioned before, along the northern area of the property, there were some wetlands noted. Uh, as, uh, in our review of, uh, you know, township records, uh, we discovered that there was only one violation that has been issued on this property, and that had to do with clearing of trees uh, without permits. No other violations have been noted. Uh, it is also interesting to note at one point, this property was designated in 2014 as an area in need of re redevelopment. However, a redevelopment plan was not adopted. Uh, the property itself, however, has been noted in the TC, what we call the town center zone, which basically permits, um, you know, very uh, a mixed use type of development where we would have commercial supporting residential development at almost 12 dwelling units to the acre. So it is interesting to note how that for uh, such a long time, even with this property being uh, having access to all types of infrastructure uh, and being located in the town center zone, hasn't seen development for almost 20 years now. Um, we think uh, the our analysis shows this property can meet criteria C, which is our uh, properties that has remained vacant for more than twenty years, and uh, will less un will 
most likely not be developed with, through only private partnership, uh, only through private capital, and will need to be developed through a public private partnership. Uh, we also designate uh, this property under criteria. We also recommend this property be designated under criteria H, which we call the smart growth principle. Again, the location of the property, it is in one of the more uh, commercially viable corridors of Township of Piscataway. It already has existing infrastructure. It is, according to the state plan in the PA1 zone, it's ideal for an infill site for a compact and uh, efficient development. So uh, our recommendation would be that this property um, to be designated as an area in need of redevelopment under criteria C and A. Now we look at the next property, which is block 7401, 7401 lot 2.02. This is the property which we I uh, earlier mentioned, we call it as the rear property. Uh, and uh, again, that's only because it does have frontage, but only a very minimal frontage of 290 feet on Styles Avenue. Uh, the site uh, uh, is currently developed with a uh, you know, large parking lot. It does have that uh, iconic 11-story uh, currently vacant office building for Township of Piscataway. Um, it also is uh, developed on the southern side with one electrical substation as well as one story building, which uh, seems to uh, have dilapidated over the years and used for some kind of storage. To the western portion of this property, it's mostly vacant with only one helipad there. Um, our review of the property showed that the parking uh, lot, again, because of its excessive land coverage, seems to have seen uh, some kind of shows uh, part of, you know, state of disrepair over the years. Uh, the main building, the 11-story building, is currently vacant um, and has remained so for I believe since 2016, if not before that. Uh, the property has received a uh, maintenance violation, again, because of overgrowth of weeds, and this appears to be an ongoing issue, uh, as we have noted from the township records. Uh, the property, again, was designated in 2014 and is in the town center uh, zone. Um, these are some of the images of the property. There was another building on this property right next to that tower, which has since uh, been uh, demolished. Uh, I believe somewhere in uh, between October 2020 to April 2022 is when uh, it was uh, demolished. Um, our redevelopment analysis showed that this property uh, can be, uh, we would recommend this property be designated under it almost three criteria. Again, remember, it needs to meet only one criteria. Um, criteria B, which is basically a discontinuance of any kind of commercial or office buildings uh, that has, uh, you know, remained vacant and is almost untenable for, you know, period of uh, at least two years. Clearly, this property has remained vacant. The 11 story tower is vacant. Um, it's, again, it's, it's interesting to see how, uh, you know, single tenant office building is no longer a modern land use planning standards. Uh, you almost would see, you know, uh, for a commercially or economically viable property, you need to create a live work play atmosphere. And uh, just having these office parks with sea of parking around us is no longer a creating an attractive commercially viable property. So we also believe that this meets that under criteria D or of an obsolete site layout. The property also meets criteria H, again, smart growth, when you assemble, you know, a couple of properties together and come up and create a more comprehensive, uh, compact, efficient land use development, uh, it would meet the H criteria for this property. Now, the third property, which is identified as block 7401, lot 2.03. This is the property with the largest frontage around 2,000 uh, feet along Hose Lane. It also has frontage along Skiles Avenue. This property is uh, 
fully developed with almost four parking lots. It does have a couple of buildings, again, ranging from three-story to one-story building. Our review of the site showed that uh, what we identify as building six, you can see on this, uh, on the top uh, page, um, top photograph, it was the only one that was currently uh, tenanted with a couple of other different types of offices. The other three buildings on the property are essentially almost vacant. Uh, over the years, uh, the, the property has received uh, various kinds of violations, uh, starting from fence installation to zoning violations to uh, needing to obtain a site plan for any kind of rehab or redevelopment on the property. We also reviewed the police records. Again, there have been many minor uh, 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 police activities on this property. However, they have been uh, almost uh, about uh, 29 uh, calls, be it you know just hang up calls or be it some kind of minor offenses or sometimes uh, uh, theft uh, of the building being uh, vacant on the property. Um, we think, again, the property meets uh, two of the criteria, criteria D. Again, going back to, uh, you know, having an office park with the sea of parking uh, is doesn't seem to meet a modern land use park standard. It almost seems like an obsolete layout. You need to create a, a mixed use type of development where you can have uh, symbiotic la land uses on the property for that to be a, a, a commercially viable redeveloped property. We also feel this property would meet the criteria each, which is the smart growth planning principle for creating a more compact land use planning development. Um, so uh, finally, uh, this is the conclusion where we studied each property by on its own, and we think it meets at least two of the criteria out of the eight criteria that it meet, needs to meet under the local redevelopment housing law. Uh, this has been a very uh, brief synopsis. Again, our uh, report has more comprehensive information. It also has all the fact records that we collected, uh, you know, be it uh, the violation records or be it uh, previous uh, designation and so on and so forth. Uh, overall, I would conclude and recommend uh, for this planning board to recommend that uh, these uh, three properties uh, be designated as an area in need of redevelopment under the various criteria I described. So uh, that's a short presentation. If anybody has any questions, I would be happy to answer. Thank you. I'm going to stop sharing the screen so this way everybody can see each other and then. Thank you. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. if I may, um, if I could, Navika, you said that um, there had been a building on one of the properties that had been demolished. I think it was in the first um, parcel. How, I apologize, I know you said when it was, but I apologize, how long ago was that demolished? So the uh, if you're talking about the northernmost, uh, between, right. uh, yes. which is currently vacant, uh, we can't really sell, again, we looked at the aerial images, so we feel it's between 1995 to 2002. We can't put, pinpoint exactly when the demolition took place. Thank you. You're welcome. Madam Chair, you're muted. Any other questions from the board? Madam Chair, Reverend Kenny. Uh, Go ahead, Reverend Kenny. Uh, in regards to those buildings, there, it seems to me, in according to your reports, most of those buildings are disarray. They, they would have to come down and uh, we have to start all over to rebuild or get a developer, whatever we plan to do. Uh, to reconstruct that whole area, so to speak. Is that correct? So, I mean, what what we looked at the property, I, I didn't say they are, uh, you know, not habitable. They do seem to uh, be 
untenable right now because of the you know the layout because of them mm -hmm. being uh, only office parks which was more of a 90s land use rather than today where we want right. to see more uh, you know uh, a mixed uh, use type of development where you would have commercial retail as well as office use so part of our review is uh, you know why are these uh, you know office buildings even if they were rehab today why are they still remaining vacant is probably because of you know the obsolete site layout right right well that type of building especially a larger building at 11 story they don't have that type of a building anymore for office space uh, you know commercial use that 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 is a, an obsolete building altogether but that's my only question i i didn't know i i've been by and in and out of that complex for quite a few years but i I never really got inside to look at those buildings, except when they were taking things out. I don't know what the inside looked like, uh, condition of the building. That's what I was asking. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other member of the board have questions? I was seeing no, hearing no questions. Um, Ms. Buckley, can we open this to the public now? If anyone in the any? public has any questions or comments, please raise your hand and I will unmute you. No one's raising their hand. <clears throat> okay, close to the public. Okay, Do, are there any more, finally, before we get to a recommendation, are there any other questions from anyone who has heard this uh, recommendation from Ms. Atke? Seeing no response, I put the uh, put it before the board. What is your pleasure? Do you see that this is in, uh, Ms. Apke has made the case that this is an area in need of redevelopment, non-condemnation. And just so the board's clear, what would be is a, is be a motion to, for a resolution recommending to the Township of Piscataway Township Council um, to, um, consider designating it an area in need of redevelopment, non-condemnation, or not. Or not. Would someone please make that motion if, if they so desire? Madam Chair, Dawn Clark, I'll make that motion. That's a motion for recommendation of a non-condemnation area in need of redevelopment. Do I hear a second? Reverend, uh, Reverend Kenny, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mayor Waller? Yes. Councilwoman Cahill? Yes. Ms. Corcoran? Yes. Reverend Kenny? Yes. Mr. Atkins? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. And Madam Chair? Yes. Thank you. Thank um, you, Ms. Atkins. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. Madam Chair, I, I, I may have missed it. Um, I'm not sure on the, on the agenda, and Laura will correct me, if we ever adopted the minutes. No, we did not. No, yes. no. Uh, number nine. We skipped it. Just didn't want oh, us to lose okay. track of that. We don't want to lose track of that. <laughs> All right, so who wants to Okay, uh, returning, excuse me. Oh, go ahead, Madam Chair. Returning to item number nine, just backing up a little bit. Uh, adoption of the minutes from the regular meeting of October the 12th, 2022. Do I have a motion to adopt the minutes? Reverend Kenny, I'll make a motion to adopt the minutes. Do I have a second? I second it. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Cahill? Yes. Ms. Corcoran? Yes. Reverend Kenny? Yes. Mr. Atkins? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. And Madam Chair? Yes. Thank you. Item number 11, discussion. Redevelopment plan for block 1701, block 2.03, also known as 4100 New Brunswick Avenue. Property is located on map page 12, page 17, excuse me, on the Piscataway Township tax map. We have a discussion regarding that property. Yes. Thank Good you. evening, members of the board. James Clark in here from Foresight Planning. How are you all? Hope you're oh, doing fine. well. How are you, Mr. Clark? Good. 
good to see you all again. So I will okay. be presenting that redevelopment plan for you. So if it's okay, I'll mm -hmm. go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Uh, so we can kind of follow along with my report. I'm actually going to start at the end of my report because it has the map. So I can kind of give you all a brief synopsis of what we're looking at here. So as stated, this is block 1701, lot 2.03, better known as 4100 New Brunswick Avenue. This is actually in the eastern part of the township, right on the border with South Bloomfield. In fact, uh, New Brunswick Avenue right here going north to south is on, actually as the actual border between Scataway and South Plainfield. So just across the street from this is South Plainfield Borough. Um, to your south uh, is Stelton Rose. You have a stop and shop here and 287 is less than a mile away. Uh, some other existing uses nearby are some uh, residential uses to the north and then a vacant uh, site to the west. Um, this is in your M5 industrial zone, and it is approximately 11.72 acres. Um, if you re recall from the in need study that was prepared, there currently is a use on the property uh, that is somewhat of a blend of manufacturing and warehouse, but it's a 100,000 square foot building right about here. And it's really almost entirely uh, surrounded by um, and existing parking lot, tons of parking. Uh, in my re in need study, it was actually found that it was probably too much parking. But um, nonetheless, in August of this year, the Township Council uh, adopted by resolution that uh, the property does in fact meet the criteria for in need of redevelopment. So this allowed for uh, myself to prepare this redevelopment plan for you for the said property. So, so now that we have a little bit of backgrounds, uh, I'm going to skip up a couple pages to actually to page five, if I may, so that I can kind of, um, sorry, not page five. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Where is it? Yeah, here we go. This is what I'm looking for. Plan goals and objectives. Um, so, out of these goals and objectives, I just want to highlight a couple. So the first is really we want to create land use requirements specific to this redevelopment area, this property specifically, so that we can effectuate its redevelopment um, in such a way that improves the area and benefits the redevelopment area. Uh, we also want to utilize best practices of zoning, uh, excuse me, of planning and engineering so that it fits in with the existing neighborhood uh, and the zone that it's currently in, which is M5 industrial. And then finally, uh, this is um, what it's the use for the property is actually envisioned to be a warehouse. So the last goal is to provide modern industrial warehousing uses and facilities in the redevelopment area. So moving on to the land use plan, as I mentioned, the principal permitted use for this redevelopment is warehouse. So just one warehouse structure on the principal use on the lot. Also considered for permitted accessory uses are pretty typical for such a facility. So you have your off-street parking and loading, uh, offices within the warehouse structure, guard houses if necessary, signs, gates, fences, emergency generators, uh, electric charging stations as required by uh, ordinance in the state. Um, also solar energy systems are permitted as it can, well, under the current uh, zoning as conditional use. So this would be permitted accessory use now. and. Um, anything that would be considered customary or incidental to such a warehouse use. Prohibited uses, uh, anything expressly not permitted herein, um, we definitely do not want any storage or warehousing of hazardous and dangerous materials and definitely no outdoor storage of materials or products. Um, so as I mentioned before, this is in your M5, so it meets, or so the use does fit in with the existing zoning. So I'm gonna move on to the redevelopment area bulk standards. So uh, these bulk standards were created specifically for this property, its unique characteristics, um, but specifically to make sure we could fit a modern warehouse use on the site without overburdening it um, and that it fits in with what uh, how it was previously used. So plenty of minimum lot width and depth because it is quite a large parcel at 11 acres but we do want uh, a good amount of setbacks. So we have 80 feet for the front from New Brunswick Avenue, 50 feet off the back, and then 50 on the sides. Um, 
structure can be no more than 55 feet. Maximum impervious cover is no more than 75% of the total area. So that would include building, parking lots, circulation, everything. Uh, and then the building itself has to have a minimum floor area of 100,000 square feet. And then the rest of the table is really just making sure that the parking stalls and the loading spaces are adequately sized to fit to these you know, tractor trailers and cars. Um, and also to make sure the parking lot is set back um, from the property lines. So with that, um, I'm gonna move on to page eight, which is actually the next one. Uh, I just wanna to touch on a couple more of requirements of this redevelopment plan. Uh, I'm specifically talking about traffic analysis and design. This is pretty typical, but we wanna make sure that any site plan that comes before your board that would try to implement this redevelopment plan is making sure that it's taking a look at um, what the traffic impacts would be, you know, how many trucks would be coming onto the site, uh, can the existing roadway handle that, uh, look at levels of service. Um, it does have a good route to 287, so that should not be a problem, but nonetheless, we want to make sure that the, both the site and the circulation can accommodate such a use. Um, and then, as always, parking is very important. So looking at this warehouse use, this is pretty typical for what we've done for past uh, warehouse redevelopment plans. So we're doing one space per 3,000 square feet of gross floor area. Um, and then we want to make sure we account for any office use that's within that building. So that's one space per 200 square feet of gross floor area, which is pretty typical. Uh, and then you, we want one loading space per 5,000 square feet. We want to make sure there's plenty of um, or enough tractor trailer spaces provided so that um, you know, you're not having tractor trailers stored offsite or not offsite, but um, not where they should be. And then finally, uh, a minimum of three ready-made uh, electric charging stations will be required for this project uh, if they go to site plan. Um, and then to wrap it up, just, uh, you know, pretty standard uh, boilerplate language for utilities. Um, solid waste disposal. I do, um, so this would be page 10. I have some signage requirements. We're allowing two monument signs. Uh, we're allowing um, wall signs on the finished facade that can't exceed 150 square feet. Um, and then lighting, we wanna make sure the parking lot's adequately lit. Uh, but most of these will really get into the details on site plan. So especially things like landscaping. Um, but I did include that we want some landscaping put in the front yard on New Brunswick Avenue to, you know, make sure you can possibly break up the um, large building walls that sometimes comes with warehouse. And then to wrap it up, I did review your master plan, but also the borough of South Plainfields. Uh, because if you're within 200 feet, you need to look at that to make sure it's consistent. And I did find that this redevelopment plan is consistent with both those master plans. Okay. Uh, there were goals and objectives that this will meet. And um, yeah, I think, and also your county, Middlesex County and state plan is also uh, consistent with this redevelopment plan. So overall, I think this redevelopment plan allows the township to properly redevelop the site uh, with a modern warehouse facility. And uh, I think it'll allow a chosen redeveloper to implement this plan. So with that, I can take any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Clarkin. Mm -hmm. Board members, do you have any um, questions of Mr. Clarkin regarding his report? Uh, uh, Madam Chair, uh, I, I actually do. <clears throat> Jim, uh, on New Brunswick Avenue in front of this, um, property this is one of the few properties that do not current that does not currently have sidewalks out in front and it right next to a Conrail uh, spur and <clears throat> in order to um, have the DOT freight division do an upgrade uh, of that railroad crossing uh, you have to have a sidewalk right there so I strongly suggest that we make sure that it is in the plan allowed to um, add a sidewalk in so we can prod the DOT freight division to do a safety upgrade of that grade crossing next door for pedestrian move movement. Absolutely, Mr. Mayor, that's a good point. So uh, typically, and it is actually in here, I forgot to touch on it. So back 
to traffic analysis and design on page eight towards the bottom of the paragraph, I did require a minimum should incorporate five uh, foot wide sidewalks along New Brunswick Avenue. So that requirement is in there. Um, I usually keep it in there because we want sidewalks, but uh, that's good to know about the free division. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of the board? Madam Chair, if I may, it's Councilwoman Cahill. So, uh, Mr. Clark and hi. Um, uh, the mayor pointed out uh, the, the need for the piece of the sidewalks to be in there, which it, it is. Uh, is there anything else in there um, to note for this board to be aware of in terms of requirements other than you know, are the typical aesthetics of the bill, you know, just our typical ordinances. It, is there anything else in there? I mean, uh, I don't know, Mr. Mayor, if there had it to be anything with right of ways or anything of that nature, um, you know, where we don't want our residents to incur, uh, you know, the fees where, you know, we always ask our corporate uh, neighbors uh, to do their part to alleviate that. I just want to make sure if there's anything else other than the sidewalks that this board should be made aware of out loud right now that you do. I, I, yes, I think, actually uh, that does. Oh, sorry, uh, go ahead, Mr. Mayor. I think uh, this question's really to, to Dawn. I, I, I'm assuming we're uh, getting the half width of the uh, master plan out there in New Brunswick Avenue. So this is, um, as you know, uh, Mr. Clark just presented the redevelopment plan to this board, um, once a developer has been designated, they have to come back to this board once again with the site plan itself. It is at that time, certainly, where we will pick up um, any next or request any necessary right away um, to bring New Brunswick Avenue in compliance with the circulation element of the master plan. Mm -hmm. um, so we will, we will get that um, when they come in for formal site plan. Yeah, I totally agree. And actually that uh, your comment, Ms. Cahill, uh, reminded me there is an actually um, an existing access easement to mm -hmm. access easement to lot 1.01, uh, which is the Buckeye easement on the Southern property line. Mm -hmm. So uh, I did put something in there that this, any site plan submitted shall honor that access easement. And that was also part, um, that was a condition of the approval that was granted by the zoning board. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it was last year, I believe. So um, Mr. Clark and also incorporated that into the plan just to make sure we have it, not only in the, the zoning board resolution, but it's here as well. Um, so thank you. If I, if I may ask another question, Madam Chair. Sure, go um, ahead. Mayor. I think that also that access easement also is for a road to go into the back of the, the adjacent property, if I correct me if I'm wrong, Dawn. That is correct. Okay. Um, this is Ron Reinerson. Wasn't this, this application just here a few uh, this property here a few months ago for the, the parking lot, 4100 New Brunswick? Y yes, they were. Okay. Yeah. I just, it's, it's one and the same. So I'm not going yeah. crazy. I just uh, <laughs> looked it up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Board members, are there any other questions before I open it up to the public? Okay. Ms. Buckley, would you ask the public if they would make a comment on this resolution, on this recommendation. Uh, you're you're, muted, you're but you unmuted muted. me, so. Muted. I'm sorry, I made sure he was unmuted. <laughs> Brian Reich has his hand up, Madam. Yeah, Brian Reich, 1247 Brookside Road. There we go. Okay. Um, Mr. Reich, is it? Reich? Oh, I didn't know if you knew to swear me you, in or not. You gave our na your name and address, correct? Yes. Okay. Do we have to swear him in, uh, Mr. Barlow? Sure. Mr. Rack, you swear the testimony given before be, the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes. Thank you. Proceed with your question, please. Um, I was just, I, I think this is probably more of when the site plan comes in, but uh, exit five is a disaster anytime around rush hour. Um, I don't know if there's been any thought given about what adding additional truck traffic around there will do. I mean, it, it regularly backs up on 287 these days. So that was, that was really my only question slash statement thing. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Uh, I think you're correct. Site plan, like I mentioned before, the traffic analysis and design at site plan, that's when their traffic engineer will prepare a um, 
traffic study for the site and it should look at nearby intersections. Um, but that may be something that uh, the township could work on with the redeveloper to make sure they look at that. Thank you, Mr. Beck. Is there any other questions? I don't think anyone else has their hands raised, Madam Chair. Okay, anyone else? No. Okay, hearing or seeing no hands. No one. Close to the public. Okay, that concludes this uh, presentation. I believe board members, what's your pleasure? Would you like to recommend or not recommend this redevelopment plan? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Reverend Kenny, uh, and the redevelopment of Block 1701-203, I recommend that uh, we uh, go forward with the redevelopment of this property. Uh, recommend for redevelopment plan. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Roll call, Mr. please. Atkins. Mr. Atkins. Mr. Atkins. Mm -hmm. Mayor Waller. He's muted. Yes. Councilwoman Cahill. Yes. Ms. Corcoran. Yes. Reverend Kenny. Yes. Mr. Atkins. Yes. Mr. Foster. Yes. And Madam Chair. Yes. Um, do we have a resolution? You want to do the resolution now, Mr. Barlow? Um, certainly, Madam Chair, um, we have a resolution uh, recommending adoption of the redevelopment plan to the Township Council as prepared by Foresight Planning, entitled 4100 New Brunswick Avenue Redevelopment Plan, dated October 23rd, 2022. So if there is a motion to a Motion adopt to move that resolution. Motion, Councilman Cahill. Thank you. Do I have a second? Okay, Tony Corcoran. Madam Chair. Ms. Cork, okay. <laughs> Roll call, please. Mayor Waller. Yes. Councilwoman Cahill. Yes. Ms. Corcoran. Yes. Reverend Kenny. Yes. Mr. Atkins. Yes. Mr. Foster. Yes. And Madam Chair. Yes. Yeah. Item number 12 is 22 PB 16 slash 17 Villas and Victor Tanglewood Terrace LLC for a preliminary and final sense, uh, site plan. Um, Thank you, Ms. Ms. Shulsky. Um, how are you doing? Good evening. My name is Deborah Good. Shulsky with the firm of Riley Riper, Holland and Kyle Greco here on behalf mm -hmm. of the applicant owner, East Coast Tanglewood Terrace LLC. Also wanted to introduce my team to you as well. I have Lauren Workeser with uh, Morgan Properties Management Company, LLC, Justin Bass with Morgan Properties, and he's gonna be our Vander White tonight displaying our exhibits for you. And we have a representative <laughs> from our assigned company, uh, Rick Crawford, who's right in the middle here. Um, and you may recall, we were before you several months ago, I guess now, at your work session mm -hmm. meeting to explain the scope of this uh -huh. application, which we hope you'll agree is fairly benign. This is an existing apartment complex that's been there for a number of years. Uh, my client is looking to give it a facelift, which it is uh, well in need of. And the signage is part of those exterior improvements that they're proposing to make. Uh, currently there exists a um, double-sided existing freestanding sign, which we are proposing to remove and slightly relocate uh, approximately nine feet closer to the roadway and replace it with two single face signs, which are generally of the same size. Your ordinance is fairly unique in that um, the use obviously is a permitted use. The signage is there and has been there for a number of years, but your ordinance really does not um, specifically address this type of sign, which is um, a little unusual, but we were told by the zoning department that we needed to seek certain bulk variances to permit this replacement of the existing sign relating to the sign area, even though the face of the sign is essentially the same as what is there, but your ordinance uh, requires calculation of the surrounding monument portion of the sign. So that's essentially the only reason that we would need relief um, from the area requirements because the face of the sign itself is, is fully compliant with that section of the code. 
Okay. And then we also will need relief from the uh, setback provision to the uh, the property line with the relocation of the sign. And our witnesses tonight will walk you through uh, the need for this and some of the visual obstructions uh, situated along the property there that, that really necessitate us having to move slightly closer up from where the sign currently exists. So with that introduction, if the board has no initial questions for me, um, what I was gonna do is just kind of for purposes of the record, read in my exhibits. I have pre-marked exhibit list, well, which Justin's gonna display. Um, I don't know if you need to share, does he need something to share the screen or? Okay. Mr. Bar there you go. Thank you, Justin. And, um, and, and we don't, some of these are kind of more administrative like housekeeping items. So we don't necessarily need to display them all, but I just wanted to just read them into the record real quick. Well, um, you, you don't really, you, you don't necessarily need to do that. What we'll do is, okay. is as he pulls them up, we'll mark them as exhibits. A lot of this stuff is already part of the record, like A1, A2, A, they don't need to be um, marked as exhibits. Okay. So, um we can we can deal with the exhibits um as mr as your witnesses utilize something that's not part of the plan okay certainly we can do that and i i, I do again i have a full a full hard copy that i can mail to miss buckley at the conclusion of of this matter um okay so with that i, I guess we can swear in the the witnesses if you don't have any initial questions for me and i, I just really have two witnesses um Lauren Workester on behalf of Morgan Properties to essentially establish standing and, and discuss what they're intending to do with the property. And then we have a representative from our sign company who can walk you through the specific details of, of the sign itself. Okay, so you're calling Ms. Workshire as your first witness? Uh, correct. Okay, is she gonna be utilizing what's on the screen or can we uns unshare that? She will not be utilizing the exhibit list. Okay, so why don't we, thank you. Ms. Worksire, if you could state your name, spell your last name, and give us your professional address, please. Lauren Werkheiser, last name is W-E-R-K-I-S is in Sam E-R, uh, design director for Morgan Properties, and I am based out of the corporate office, which is at 160 Clubhouse Road, King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, 19406. Okay, raise your right hand. You swear the testimony you give before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So, if you got I do. Okay, your witness, Ms. Schulze. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Workheiser, can you explain what your affiliation is with the applicant owner, East Coast Tanglewood Terrace LSC, and Morgan Properties, and explain what the connection is between those two entities? Yes. Yeah, so again, I am the design director for Morgan Properties. Uh, I oversee all in interior and architectural design on behalf of the company. Um, and with that, I also oversee uh, signage efforts. Um, and I am representing Morgan Properties um, and East Coast Tanglewood Terrace LLC um, as the legal record owner for the property. That's the off-premise sign that, that's serving. Um, and the property is managed by Morgan Properties, who um, I work on behalf of. And you're therefore authorized to appear and make representations at tonight's hearing on behalf of the applicant owner, is that correct? Yes. And I had marked Exhibit A4, which is the property deed. Um, does that confirm the ownership of the subject property? Yes. And can you tell the board a little bit about Morgan Properties and some of your other properties? Yeah, so uh, we were established in 1985. Um, we're a national real estate uh, investment and management company. Uh, we currently own uh, and operate a multifamily portfolio of 345 apartment communities now. Um, it's about over 94,000 units across 19 states. Um, we're in the top three largest uh, owners and operators in the country. I think we're currently the largest uh, owner and operators in Pennsylvania, Maryland, and New York. Um, and we have about 2,300 employees uh, nationwide. Um, so uh, we've been doing this for a while. We're in a lot of different municipalities and states, um, but we also uh, operate up and down, uh, you know, north to south in the state of New Jersey. So, you know, very familiar with a lot of the uh, 
the, the rules and regulations in the state of New Jersey, and we've been operating, you know, within this municipality for a while. Okay. And how long has the applicant owned this particular pro pro uh, property, the apartment complex here? 15 years. So uh, it was 15 years, September 28, 2007, when we purchased it. And are you familiar with the subject property, its features, the proposal, and the general surrounding area of the property? Yes. Okay, I'm referring to Exhibit A5, which is an aerial, which, Justin, you can display that. Can you identify the location of the property that's the subject of this evening's hearing? Yes. So we're going to mark that as A1, though. So okay. don't confuse the record by going. Oh, you might be confusing my notes. <laughs> Sorry okay. about that. So this is A1. A1, okay. So I'm going to read my blurb that I have here. So... Property known as Tanglewood Terrace, large multifamily residential complex located in the RM zoning district. It's comprised of approximately 13.5 acres. It has 214 dwelling units. There are three separate entrances. Um, there are two uh, off of New Brunswick, I'm sorry, two off of Tanglewood Drive, one off of New Brunswick, Old New Brunswick Road, which connects to Lennox Drive. Um, and Lennox Court is a, where uh, the signs are that we're looking to locate um, for this application this evening. Okay. And the area that's generally surrounding the property, can can you describe those some of those uses? Yeah, so it's mainly uh, surrounded by predominantly other multifamily complexes, but there are also some single family um, residences as well. And you mentioned that the application before the board is limited to the signage, specifically that one replacement sign at the main entrance of the apartment complex, correct? Yes. And the sign vendor will explain in more detail for the board, but can you generally explain why the sign is being updated? Yes. Um, so recently we refinanced at this property, so we were able to get um, a decent amount of funding to make some overall general enhancements and improvements. Um, so as part of our enhancement efforts, we took a look at the community and identified just some general areas where we really wanted to make some, some improvements. And one of them is, you know, we don't really have a significant or a main entrance of, of note here. Um, and, you know, with a lot of the new competition in town directly across the street um, and new construction, obviously we're an older community. Um, so we wanted to compete a little bit and also just enhance the overall curb appeal and the general look of the community for our residents and also for the surrounding area. Um, so one of the things that we took a hard look at was obviously our curb appeal and our signage. Um, and in addition to that, our leasing office was an old apartment that basically was converted a very long time ago prior to us even buying the community. Um, so, you know, if you were to build a community today, you would have a very identifiable clubhouse. Um, of note that you could easily, you know, drive into and note, okay, here's the clubhouse, here's an office. So, you know, we really are looking to create more of a grand main entrance that's identified by signage so that, um, you know, when you drive in, you can identify also our leasing office, which is basically, again, as I mentioned, a unit that was converted, um, that we've done our best to try and highlight, you know, and make pop in essentially from, you know, other units that are within the community. Um, so, with that, that sparked kind of this conversation and with the additional funding that we were able to receive that started, you know, the, the snowball efforts of looking to enhance the signage. Um, and we felt, you know, this was a great opportunity to do that. Um, and that's, you know, where, really where we are today. And we haven't touched that sign since we bought the property in 2007, other than just refacing it. That's all the questions I have of this witness. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Members of the board, do you have any uh, questions of this witness? Okay, seeing no hands, um, Ms. Buckley, would you open it to the public and see if they have any questions of this witness? No one's raising their hands, Madam Chair. No, thank you, close to the witness. Um, Madam Chair, if I may, it's Dawn Corcoran. Sure. Um, Ms. Schulski, who, which of your professionals will be addressing the um, reports? That will be uh, Mr. Crawford, who will be testifying okay. next. Okay, thank you. Okay, then Ms. Schulsky, you can call your next witness. Okay, my next witness would be uh, Richard Crawford.
Mr. Crawford? Sorry, I was uh, muted. Mr. Crawford, if you could state your name, spell your last name, and give us your professional address, please. Uh, Richard Crawford, C-R-A-W-F-O-R-D, address 302 North Washington Street, Orwigsburg, Pennsylvania, don't mm -hmm. ask me to spell that, 17961. Could you spell the town for me? <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm getting my card. Yes. <laughs> O-R-W-I-G-S-B-U-R-G. Or Wigsburg. You okay. got that, Ms. Buckley? <laughs> okay. If you could raise your right hand, sir. Just state the testimony given before the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. I do. You're a witness, Ms. Shelsky. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Crawford, with whom are you employed in what capacity? Um, I work with Bar True Signs, and I'm project manager. I'm a sign designer. I do surveys, and I take care of permitting for the company. I'm sorry, what's the name of the company? Bar Chush, B A R T U S H. Thank you. Bar Chush. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and Mr. Crawford, can you just describe some of your experience in the sign industry? Um, and Justin, if you want, you can display. Well, you're going to have it marked as Exhibit A6, but I believe following Mr. Barlow's numbering, it'll be Exhibit A2, which is CV of Rick Crawford. Yeah, I've been in the sign industry since 1983. Uh, I've worked with Bartree Signs since 1998. I also have a consulting company, Mercer Sign Consultants, where I help sign owners with and towns with sign zoning problems. Uh, I'm an attorney licensed to practice in Pennsylvania. And I'm one of the board of directors of a national sign foundation that does research on signs, the United States Sign Council Foundation. Uh, we've done about 20 research projects on the design characteristics of signs. And I have personally managed all of them. And I'm the co-author of the most recent American Planning Association publication, Street Graphics and the Law, which some of your planning people may be familiar with. And have you testified in a number of municipal proceedings with respect to signage? Yes. Um, I have to think about it, but yes. Um, in New Jersey, in this area, Branchburg Township, West Windsor Township, Homedale Township, Barrow of Eaton Town, Hillsborough Township, uh, Raritan Township are examples. Um, and are you familiar with the subject property and its features and the proposal as well as the surrounding area? Yes. Are you also familiar with the applicable regulations of the Piscataway Township Zoning Ordinance? Whether they're applicable or not, but yes. <laughs> um, can you describe for the board the existing freestanding sign that's the subject of the application, including the size, general dimensions, appearance, and location of the sign? And I know we have um, exhibit an exhibit which will help you walk the board through this. Um, sign package of the proposed and existing signage consisting of four sheets, which we will mark as exhibit A3. Um, this is the new sign. Um, I'm gonna talk about the existing sign. Yeah, that one. Yeah, so the existing sign is what we call a faux monument. It's a man-made monument made to look like it's masonry. It's sort of a driving process. It's double-sided, it has signage or panels on both sides. It's not internally illuminated, it has external illumination. Um, what is generally considered the sign area, the sign area is 29.32 square feet. If you count the whole monument, you're at 43.64 square feet, that's the entire structure. And it sits about 28 feet back from the curb. And in terms of the location of the existing sign, are there any obstructions along the property frontage that limit its visibility? Yeah, so this is the first thing that I surveyed when I went out in the, in the early spring. Uh, it, it sits in a big grass area. Um, it's not located near an entrance. And the view of the sign is obstructed by trees along Old New Brunswick Road and vegetation. 
Um, can you explain for the board what's proposed with respect to the replacement sign? Yes, so I was tasked with figuring out how to create an, a suitable entrance for the property. And the applicant wanted to put two single-sided signs really? Really cool. at the entrance. Pardon me? Is Mr. That Fox? Mr. Oh, Falker? Okay. Continue, Mr. Falker. Okay. Um, we have two single-sided signs at what will be the main entrance versus one double-sided sign. Um, the uh, thought behind that is two single-sided signs essentially equal a double-sided sign. Drivers can't see both sides of a single-sided sign, and they will only see one side. So this creates an entranceway um, and marks the property and is an updated design. So they're trying to beautify the entrance. Uh, the signs are proposed as internally illuminated. However, only the letters light up. So that black background is not illuminated. Mm. And then instead of traditional, instead of wood, we, we use Trex to create the same wood-like appearance because it lasts a lot longer. Um, we use this as an exhibit, but the letters will not be raised like this. They will be pushed through the metal face. So they, they push through about a quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. And will the face of the sign itself actually be below what the ordinance requirement is with respect to the maximum size? Yes. So I looked at all of this when we were creating the design, what was in the code, um, thinking that the 28 square feet of the proposed new sign would be under the 32 that will apply to um, churches, hospitals, non-public schools, and other permitted institutions. So we are at 28 square feet, a four by seven. If you count the whole monument, it's 54.64 square feet. But our thinking was, and also in relation to the existing sign, that this sign would be slightly smaller than the existing sign and be code compliant. And the sign is also proposed to be slightly relocated from the existing location, correct? Yes, the desire was to place the signs at the at Lennox Court to create an entrance um, to mark the entrance clearly for motorists. Right. And let's mark this um, what Justin is showing here as Exhibit A4. This is a portion of the site plan showing the location of the proposed sign. And then let's mark as Exhibit A5 the next one, Justin, which is photographs showing the proposed sign location consisting of two sheets. So when I went out to survey. I found a utility pole and I found lots of trees at the entrance, well, all along the roadway. So if we wanted to put a sign at the entrance, it couldn't be behind that utility pole, in my opinion. A, because there would be, a, there would be an obstruction and B, it would be too far back from the roadway for drivers to be able to see and read the sign. So there's a triangle, if you will, here created with the utility pole out to that tree on the top photograph. And that's where we want to land the sign. We can't make, we don't want those trees to go away, but we're giving drivers coming in the opposite direction as good a chance as possible to be able to see the sign. So that's why we, we are mimicking on e each side and we're making it symmetrical, um, but we're in this zone where we're closer to the road than 25 feet back from the property line would permit. And correct me if I'm wrong, but is the proposed sign uh, proposed to be located 21 feet from the curb line and 10 feet from the property line, correct? Yes, that's correct. I took the 10 feet back from the property line from other portions of the uh, signs and residential zones. So that, that code section does contemplate 10 foot setbacks. And since maybe 21-1201, uh, um, four applies, or maybe it doesn't, it would be within the board's prerogative to say that the 10-foot setback applies. 
And are you familiar with other signage uh, with respect to other apartment complexes near the subject property? Yeah, in general, uh, if you get closer down to 287, there's the Garova Piscataway, which has a V-shaped sign, uh, which is essentially what we're doing. Only they put their V together. We are separating them with the driveway. Okay. Um, there's the Carlton Club. That has the same situation. They have two single-sided signs on either side of their entranceway. And then right across the street, there is the Avalon property, which has one double-sided sign. Right. And that let's mark that sheet as Exhibit A, um, A6, what Justin just pulled up. And it, it looks like that sign is actually has less uh, visibility obstructions to it. It looks like it's closer to the road than, than our proposed sign. Is that your understanding? Yes, it's a newer development. There are far less obstructions along the roadway. The Avalon sign is closer to the curb than our proposed signs will be. Okay. And can you explain why the proposed improvements are necessary and beneficial um, with respect to the signage? Well, first, it's going to give drivers um, a better visibility to the sign. So it's going to be easier for people to see and read the signs. And we're not just talking about visitors or potential uh, new residents, but I'm sure there are a slew of delivery people coming to this property at all hours. Um, this will mark, identify the property properly um, at all times of the day and night and all types of weather. Uh, it promotes safety, it promotes um, good driving because it's not just a matter of, oh, we're gonna stop accidents. Signs don't cause accidents, but signs can cause inappropriate driving maneuvers like slowing down, like stopping, like missing a turn and then going up ahead and making a U-turn. And if you make the sign visible and legible, you've eliminated some of those issues, or you've done the best you can. Um, thirdly, we're gonna beautify the entrance. Um, it's gonna be a vast improvement compared to the existing sign. So we're gonna improve the, the appearance of the property and the surrounding area. And you're familiar with the legal standard for the grant of a C variance. Um, I believe some of what you said might weigh into that. Um, is there anything else that you want to clarify with respect to the positive criteria? to satisfy the hardship criteria. Ms. Shulsky, if I may just interrupt for a second. Mr. Crawford, you're not a licensed planner, are you? No, but I know plenty. Okay, and, and you're not a, a, a licensed traffic engineer. You're no, a sign, I'm not. You're a sign expert. I'm a sign expert. Okay. Uh, Ms. Schultz, I don't that, think it's appropriate to have Mr. Crawford comment on the positive or negative criteria, the granting of a variance. It, it's just not within his area of expertise. Well, he, he is a plan. licensed attorney as well. Okay, but you and I are licensed attorneys, and if we tried to give planning testimony, we wouldn't be allowed to. Understood. Okay. I'll move on. Let, um, let, let, me say, let me see if I can say this. Based upon my experience in the state of New Jersey, this is a classic um, bulk and dimensional variance. It's a classic case. And do you um, believe that the proposed signage would have, in your experience, um, doing this for a number of years with your credentials, do you believe that the proposed signage would have any adverse impact on the character of the neighborhood in consideration of the surrounding area? No, yeah, I, I think not. that's planning testimony, Ms. Shulsky. Mm -hmm. I, I understand. I understand why you're I think asking. He can give his think... opinion. Go ahead. No, I, he can give opinions in signs. He can't give opinions in planning or engineering or water runoff or. Can I know. give an opinion based upon research? Mm -hmm. But again, it's not your area of expertise. If I research oh. engineering, I can't give questions on how much water can go through a 10 inch pipe? I mean. I mean, he could, he could, he could offer and the board could give whatever weight that they, that they deem mm -hmm. it to be. He obviously yeah. is not, I'm not offering him as an expert in, in planning. So the no, board. And, I, and I appreciate that, but I don't think he can give any testimony that starts with, it's my opinion, other than it's my opinion that this is a, uh, 
a nice color palette for the sign or it's my opinion as to why I want to interiorly light them. Like he can give his opinion about the signs, but I don't think he can give his opinion about fitting the character of the neighborhood and positive and negative criteria. Um, do you believe, understood, I'll move on. Uh, Mr. Carver, do you believe that the proposed sign will be an improvement to the overall appearance of the apartment complex and in keeping with some of the exterior building improvements that Morgan Properties is proposing to make to the property? Yes, the sign is in the best, we're proposing the sign in the best location possible. And the alternative would be a sign that would not be visible or legible for motorists. Um, and did you have an opportunity to review the review letter issued by the Division of Engineering, Planning and Development? Yes. And is it your understanding that the applicant is agreeable to complying with item three, which is the uh, fixing the, the broken sidewalk and item five regarding removal of certain signage? That's my understanding. And um, is it your understanding some of that signage actually has already been removed as well? Yes. And regarding item five, which is the recommendation as to reducing the size of the sign height, do you have an opinion as to whether um, it makes sense to reduce the sign height? Based upon the research studies that I have managed, most of which were done at Penn State, at the Pennsylvania Transportation Institute, which is called the Larson now, um, low mounted signs are hard or harder for motorists to see. Uh, we did one project in regard to minimum sign height. And surprising as that may seem, um, the view of low mounted signs, five feet, four feet high, the view of them is blocked by other traffic to a high degree. And that was the basis of the study. Uh, particularly where you have a four lane road where someone on an opposite direction on the, out, on the outside lane is trying to look across and they have only maybe five or eight seconds to see the sign. Um, the, view, the view of a low mounted sign is blocked to a degree that motorists can't see the signs. Um, New Jersey DOT has a traffic audit available online from 2019 that they took a look at this afternoon. And it uh, was taken farther down the road at South Randolph Road. But when I look at the numbers, the traffic counts per hour at certain hours of the day, morning and evening. Um, you can have a high degree of blockage if you make this lower. So if you said, well, make it one foot lower, I'd say that can't be my recommendation based upon the research. It, it should stay the height that it is. Um, and in fact, in the study at Penn State, RVs and trucks and SUVs were not even imputed into the study. They were, we just looked at cars. So the higher the sign, the easier it is for motors to see and read the sign. That would be my recommendation. And regarding regarding item one, which relates to the dedication of additional right of way, is it your understanding that the township's master plan has changed, and as a result, the township is requesting that nineteen feet of additional right of way along the entire property frontage of applicant's property be dedicated? That's my understanding, yes. And if the applicant were to dedicate the additional 19 feet along the entire length of the property, would that then put the proposed sign within the right of way? Yes, the, as we are proposing it, yes. And, and in your opinion, would that create some issues for the owner? Yeah, you're going to end up with signs in a newly dedicated right of way or behind it if you go with the 25 feet, um, that won't be able to be seen. It'd be a, be a waste of time. And nor, would that would be, nor would it be a service to, to motors. They won't be able to see them. Um, and could it also impact some of the other existing area and bulk requirements of the apartment complex in terms of setbacks of existing buildings, impervious coverage, building coverage, those types of things, if an additional 19 feet were or taken from the property. Ms. Scholsky, that's planning testimony. He can't answer that. Okay. That's all the questions I have. Thank you. Board members, uh, you heard the testimony of this witness. Um, does anyone have any questions? And I'd like to start out with my own question. Um, the, the 
the height of the of the letters on the original on the proposed sign is are they larger or the same size or even smaller than the sign that's there now the letters i'm just going by my eye because i can't i don't want to call this up on my design program but the letters on the proposed sign are larger <laughs> than the letters on the existing sign okay, if you see you. if you look at if you look at the exhibit it, it's all on one line right now on that oval but in the new sign, it's stacked. So the letters could be larger. Okay, I see. Thank you. Now, um, any other board members have questions of this witness? Madam Chair, if I may, it's not a question, but I would like to circle back to item number one in the report. Um, just going back to what Ms. Schulsky said, this board wouldn't grant the applicant the right to have a sign in the right away. So as, as you're aware, anytime an application is brought before this board, we take a look at our circulation element of the master plan. In this case, the requirement along um, Old New Brunswick Road is 52 feet. That is why the staff has made the recommendation that the applicant make a 19 foot um, dedication. Now, if they were to make that dedication, it would be up to this board where that sign should be placed outside of that right away, whether it be 10 feet, um, five feet. I know Mr. Crawford made a comment that across the street, there's the Avalon, the Grove. Those, those developments were also required to make this 19 foot dedication to bring this roadway to the 104 foot um, overall right away. Those signs are slightly closer due to that roadway dedication. Um, Mr. Crawford, I don't recall if you made um, any comments about the square footage of those signs um, across the street um, and how they compare to the one being proposed this evening. Um, but again, I just want to bring to the board's attention: this is not this is not something unique to, that we ask. This is of all applicants that appear before our board um, in terms of the right of way dedication. Um, you know, we might be able to work with you in terms of the the size of the sign, um, but it, it, waiving this requirement is not something this board tends to do in terms, of, again, of that right away dedication. I just want to, I just want to bring that to everyone's, you know, attention and, and so forth. Um, but ultimately, it, it, it's it's the decision of this board. Um, Debbie, do you want me to comment on that now, or do you want to? Okay. I've no comment. I was just going to say, I mean, just from a legal perspective, I mean, and I understand, I understand what you're saying. And I appreciate the fact that you're trying to keep everyone, treat everyone equally. And I, and I do, I do appreciate that. But I do think our situation is different. When the apartment complex was constructed across the street it was a raw land site. It's much easier when, when it's raw land to plan and develop and, and determine where you're going to put your buildings and your setbacks in relationship to the ultimate right of way. Here, it's been an existing apartment complex for a number of years with existing signage and it just doesn't seem like it's rationally related that there's a nexus between that 19 foot dedication and what the relief that we're seeking tonight i mean as i'm sure the board is well aware there is there is numerous cases out there that say there has to be some reasonable relationship there has to be something <laughs> generated by this particular development that's necessitating the need for immediate road improvements that would justify having to provide, you know, essentially right away without just compensation. So again, we, we really want to work with the township on this, but 19 feet is, is really extraordinary amount of land along that entire property frontage, given just the nominal improvement that's being done here, which is simply replacing a sign. Well, I'm I just want to add to that. <laughs> I'm sorry, just, I just wanted to add to that really quickly. So. And, and Ms. Schulsky tried to, we tried to talk about this in advance because I, I know that this is a sticky situation. So I, I consulted our general counsel in house to just say, look, what is the process of going about this? And basically, I mean, the overall response is, is we are totally agreeable to doing this, but the process for us is, is we have to go to the lender and say, hey, um, you know, we're looking to, 
to dedicate the right away, and we have to say what it is that it, it, that we're looking to dedicate. So there has to be some type of plan or some type of proposal that says what this is being dedicated for. And then there's a process. And from what I'm told, it's not a quick process. It could take several months for the lender to get back to us. There's a cost associated with that, you know, that we would incur. And and again, you know, our general counsel said they're happy to put a letter together that says that we're agreeable to going down that path if and when plans ever come to fruition, if something were to, you know, happen where there's going to be an expansion or something. Hey, uh, Ma Madam Chair, can I cut this off? This, you know, this is going on too long. If you don't give the right of way up, I'm voting no. And I've been not on this board, ma Madam, I've been on this board for 30 years. We treated everybody equally. When it comes to the master plan, we get the dedication and the discussion. So if you guys aren't going to do the dedication, then I'm voting no. Simple as that. And I'll encourage my other board members to vote it no just, too. I mean, it, it really. Councilor, can, can I push you water survive? up the hill on this one? I'm just saying we're trying to be reasonable here. But if you have to take, if you have to go through eminent domain ten years from now because you want to ride the road. You got to pay my client a lot of money. To I get, well, then, that I'm voting no. I'm voting. I'm voting no. And and voting just no. to be clear, Ms. Schultz, I, I I didn't want to cut off Ms. Workheiser before. Mr. Barlow, can uh, we take a vote yeah. on this? I, I just wanted to put something on the record. Here. Okay, Mayor, I appreciate that. I just want to put something on the record. You, you're not just trying to change a sign because if you were going to just reface a sign. You, you could do that without going before the board. You, you want to change the sign and move it to an area that's within um, the 25 foot setback currently. So this isn't just, we wanna change the sign. If, if you wanted to change or reface the sign in its current location, you could do that without having to appear before the planning board. It's the moving of the signs and the placement of them that's triggering the variance relief um, and, and, the, and the requisite standard. So I just want the record to be clear. We're not just changing a sign we're moving the signs and that's what's triggering all this. And um, that's the only comment I had, if any of the other board members have any questions following up on Mayor Wall. Uh, and I think Thank part you, of that Mr. too is the fact that your, sign, your ordinance doesn't address this type of sign. It's under this category that it really doesn't fit within. And there's other districts that allow it to be 10 feet where it is proposed. We, we only allow okay. traditional signs to be located 10 feet. I mean, those are, they're small signs. We're talking very small signs, not a, I mean, you're coming in here, even if it was a 28 foot sign, we wouldn't allow you to have it. At, the ordinance doesn't allow you to have it 10 feet from a, the property line. Um, this um, is Dawn, if I, if, I may, if I may, just again, getting back to the issue of the right-of-way dedication. Um, look, we save our taxpayers dollars by having our corporate business partners agree to that. Uh, you know, Ms. Shulsky telling me that we would have, you know, that your client would be eligible to get, you know, quite a bit of money for that right away has no bearing on this board, to be honest with you. What we do on this board in terms of that is ask our business, our corporate partners to do that precisely for the reason of saving the taxpayers the dollars. Has nothing to do whether that I want to do this or that or the other. At the end of the day, that road will have to need improvement. The the road may be widened some, and the last thing that this board would be willing to sustain is to pay for that right of way because that's how we save our taxpayers' dollars. And I'll be quite honest with you, I have a twenty foot right of way in front of my house that I had no say on when my road half width was changed. No one came to me and said, oh, Gabrielle, here's, you know, the money for that. Um, and I didn't even go before a board to argue my point. The point is, is that these are for the betterment of the society, like sidewalks, et cetera, et cetera. I would venture to say that if the client is agreeable, well, while it sounds like Ms. Uh, Workheiser is saying that, and there's these other sort of you know, behind the scenes issues that may delay the project. Um, I might just have you ask your client to 
table this for a moment, go back to the lender now and ask them exactly what that process is. Because that sounds like to me from Ms. Workheiser is that that's really the only issue is going to be the delay and how much time it takes for you to advise the lender of sort of this loss of land and then whatever it's going to take to maybe redo that loan paperwork. Um, that is our goal here. We try to do right by our residents and we try to save them those taxpayer dollars. And I know, you know, the mayor has heard it for 30 years. So he's kind of not, does not have patience for this. Where I just want to give a full explanation as to what is behind this board's adamant um, sort of stance on that. If I, if I could just be blunt about it, but, but in a maybe clearer way perhaps. And well, I just want to clarify so that I can be clear. We're happy to go to the lender and it's not about time. And we're happy to, to, to absorb the cost that's associated with plans and presenting and getting the approval. But we don't know what we're asking for approval for. We have to go to them and say, here's the plans for the right of way. Well, I think the township would expect you to hire an engineer and survey it and provide all that information. That's my understanding. Yes. And, but what, it, but what is the right of way for? Like, what, what are we doing? Are we widening the road? Are we putting in a turning lane? Are we? I guess that's what? the other issue, too. And, and, and again, I, I, I mean, I wasn't that's trying to put a gun to your head and say that, that we're not going to. We've been we trying to open the township for. over the last six um, um, We need to, to the records. Okay. We need people Let's to talk see. one at a time, please. Yeah. Ms. Schultz, you're talking over your client. So, <laughs> um, the widening of it's a 19 foot dedication it's exactly what it says in the report but the night the, the my concern is the 19 foot dedication then puts our proposed sign in that right away so if you no, ever go to no, widen you, the road you, you, our sign's going to be in the right you away you, you can't your sign's going to be farther back you're going to go you're going to start at the 19 foot dedication oh, and then move the sign back whether and the, the relief you would be seeking is whether it's five feet from that 19 foot right away or 10 feet or whatever. And that would be what you are seeking the relief from the board. Well, not the board can't let you put the sign in the dedicated right away. So then we're going to have our sign back further than where it is right now. Yes. yes. Right. Uh, Mr. Right. Crawford, I'm sorry. You had an exhibit before that showed the proposed setback. I believe it was for Avalon in the Grove. Maybe it was around 16 feet. Is that correct? I think it showed it back from the curb. From the curb, okay. Yeah. Okay, there it is, okay. I think it was A6. Yeah, you were from the curb, okay. Right, so. So Ms. Schultz, so that's, what, where, that's what Mr. Bar I'm sorry, that, that's what Mr. Barlow is trying to say to you. You cannot, we wouldn't approve of obviously a sign in, a right, in the right of way, but if in fact your client was agreeable to the dedication, then we would want to know what you would, what relief you'd be looking for. Whereas at Avalon, right, you can see, again, this is from curb. Maybe it's eight feet, maybe it's seven and a half feet from property line. Right. But see, yeah, Debbie, I guess this all goes back to my original point, but then it, even if, then it doesn't make any sense because we do the plans, we get the approval, we dedicate the, the right of way, we have to put the sign 19 we have we can't put the sign in the right away you we, even if you got the right away doesn't mean you're actually going to to act on it so then we would just have a sign that sits really far back from the road Ma madam chair i want to make a motion to deny this application i i, I mean I, i'm tired of hearing this application you know, you guys didn't come prepared. You knew you knew the town was asking for this. Your attorney knew this was asking this. I, I have been, with been, all due respect, I have been talking to all your various consultants. And all right, my listen, one question I, I, that I never Mr. got Mr. Barlow, I'm making a motion to deny this application. Well, Mayor, I appreciate that. But I just think um, I, I want just Ms. Scholsky to indicate if she doesn't have any further testimony she plans on putting on the record. And we just have to open it to the public. And then it would be appropriate for a motion. I just want to clarify that we have been working in, in due diligence and good faith trying to resolve this for the last since we became aware of of this 19 foot 
uh, dedication. When we were originally speaking after the planning board meeting that we were at two months ago, we were thinking it might be a few feet. We had no idea what the, the ultimate implication of it with this amount of land. So I have been trying to speak with all your consultants. They've all been very, very responsive to me when I'm, but nobody has been able to answer that question of what, you know, whether the township would grant us back an easement if we were to dedicate this, could we then have a, an easement to have a right to have the sign there? And it sounds like from what you're saying tonight, no, that's not the case. But that was the question I was trying to, to learn before this hearing so that we could properly respond to to the board tonight. And we have been really trying to work this out. That's why we, quite honestly, that's why we gave an adjournment the last year and we were trying to come up with a resolution so that we could have everything, you know, resolved and discussed this evening. Mr. Mr. Barlow, let's let's move move uh, see if the public wants to make comments so we come to a conclusion on this. Can we unshare the screen, please? Okay, uh, Ms. Buckley, would you? Uh, I'm opening the push this portion to the uh, public, and would you check and see if anyone has made a motion that they want to ask a question of this witness? No one's raising their hand, Chairman. Thank you. It's closed to the public. Uh, what? Where do we go now? Do we I, I, Madam Chair, my my motion still stands to deny this. I mean, uh, is there a second? Uh, I'll second that motion. Roll call. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mayor Waller. Yes. Councilwoman Cahill. Yes. Ms. Corcoran. Yes. Reverend Kenny? Yes. Mr. Atkins? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. And Madam Chair? Yes. Okay. The motion has been denied. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, our final item on the agenda. Well, it's not, yeah, it's final item. Item number 13, discussion and adoption of the 2023 planning board calendar. Ms. Buckley, do you have um, a proposed calendar? Everybody got it in their packet, Madam Chair. Okay, are there any, um, are there any adjustments or changes that the board wishes to make to the proposed calendar at this time? If there is no amendments or adjustments, uh, or adjustments, I make a. Would someone like to make a motion to accept this as our official calendar for 2023? Madam, Madam Chair, Chair Reverend Kenny, I'll uh, <laughs> make that motion that uh, we accept this as our official uh, 2023 calendar. Second. Body more okay. calendar. Mm -hmm. I'll second it. Thank you. Thank Roll you, call, Mr. please. Mayor Waller. Yes. Councilwoman Cahill. Yes. Ms. Corcoran? Yes. Reverend Kenny? Yes. Mr. Atkins? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. And Madam Chair? Yes. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Barlow? Don't move, have... Madam Chair. Second. Another on, resolution? Oh, do we have a resolution? I'm sorry. Did yeah, I miss Mr. Barlow, I believe we have a resolution. The area in need. Okay. Oh, okay. Just to go back. Um, the first area needs study. Um, I don't think we adopted the resolution, Madam Chair. We did it on the second one. Correct, Laura? Correct. Okay. So we just need a motion to adopt the resolution on um, the area needs study on for redevelopment recommending to the Township mm -hmm. Council. Is that the New Brunswick Road? Uh, New Brunswick Avenue? No, that was the discussion no, no. for the area in need. Okay. Do I have a, a motion to adopt the resolution? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. Don't I'll second. second it, Reverend Kenny. Okay. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Two. Mayor Waller. Okay. Yes. Ms. Cor um, Councilwoman Cahill. Yes. Ms. Corker. Yes. Reverend Kenny. Yes. Mr. Atkins. Yes. Mr. Foster. Yes. And Madam Chair. Yes. 
Now you can go to your adjournment, Madam Chair. <laughs> Okay. Was, there, was there a four-lot subdivision that needed to be memorialized, or was that done earlier? We that was done already. Um, that's yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Was yes. That okay. was the first. Gotcha. Just wanted to make sure. Every, <laughs> every oh, day. I got it. Thanks, Rob. Another set of eyes is always good. Okay. Our, next, <laughs> our next site plan meeting is November the 23rd, uh, everyone. So uh, motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion. Second. I second it, Mr. Good. Foster. All in favor? Aye. 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 Everybody Aye. Does that have the one. same privilege? Hearing none, the motion, uh, the meeting is adjourned. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yep. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Technical Take review. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Everyone. Good night. 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 Good night.